rolling grassland of western Nebraska is a vast and seemingly infinite space. Part of the western high plains, the region is known for howling winds, large farms, and few humans. It's also where a species native to the high plains is fighting for survival. My name is Lucia Corral. I'm a student from University of Nebraska at Lincoln. I'm part of the Nebraska Cooperative Fish and Wildlife Research Unit. Corral came to Nebraska on a Fulbright scholarship from Guatemala. She has her master's in wildlife ecology. For her doctorate, she's tracking down one of Nebraska's most elusive predators, the aptly named swift fox. A sweet fox is the smallest canid species in the northern Great Plains. Uh, it's a very small fox, the size of a cat, basically, a domestic cat. It's no taller than 12 inches, and it's about the size of a cat. It's really small. It's yellowish color, yellowish, grayish, with more white in the belly and in the inner parts of the body. A nocturnal creature, swift fox are considered an endangered species in Nebraska. Most of the historical evidence about them is anecdotal, and spotting one in the wild is rare. For the last year and a half, Corral has been trying to pinpoint where exactly swift fox are calling home. But since she's searching an area the size of West Virginia, Corral needed to develop a system to gather the necessary data. To do that, she and her research assistant, Alan Harrington, are using camera traps. That has less bitch. Well, the cameras are motion sensored cameras. Um, they also have a, a heat sensor, thermal sensor on there. So um, any detection to set off the camera is gonna be through motion or heat. Camera locations are chosen based on a variety of factors, like the size of the property, the landscape and land use. Existing structures close to game trails work Let's best. Place it. Sweet foxes try to avoid tree lines usually, and they move more in open areas, relatively flat areas with short grass, uh, trying to avoid predators and coyotes. In front of each camera, a stake is driven into the ground and scent lures are set. In this case, skunk scented petroleum jelly. What about the smell of skunk? The smell of skunk, it's, it's great. I actually really love it now. Um, you know, initially you're kind of like, whoa, it hits you in the face, but once you greet it every day, it just really becomes a part of you. Corral and Harrington have set up cameras at more than 1,250 locations in 24 counties, gathering hundreds of thousands of digital images. More than 25 species of mammals and several bird species have also been documented. Swift fox have been seen at 33 different locations. But we have found foxes in the habitats that we know they are suitable habitat for the species. Um, you know, short grasses, mixed grasses, open areas, flat areas, uh, pastures with uh, cows, cattle, overgrazed pastures, uh, loamy, sandy soil, which is, uh, it's good for them to, they live in then, so they also select for places with those kind of soils. Corral says depending on its location, a swift fox den could impact future human developments as well. So it's important to have the basic information to do any informed decision, to do any, any, any type of management or conservation. We need to have the basic information where they are and why they are selecting those areas and how they're moving in the landscape and how they are doing in terms of population. So this is kind of the basic we need to know, how many and where. And that's why we are just starting with the distribution map where we can find them driving hundreds of miles a day, getting in and out of trucks, pounding skunk-scented steaks into the ground. Place to put the steak. <laughs> Looks good. It's taxing work, but necessary. They have been around, and 
We don't know much about them here in Nebraska in terms of distribution and abundance of the species. Perfect. But we need to know because it's part of it's one of those pieces in the puzzle that makes the ecosystem be uh, keep functioning. Does that answer the question? Yes. <laughs>